After beating Emil and his Montreal Ice Hughes last week, we return this Saturday with another low-tier mayhem battle, looking to go 3-1 on the season. We play against T. Rowe Price and his Columbus Caballions, another player we have played against frequently on this channel. With a chance to go 3-0 this week, we have a big opportunity to put ourselves in a very strong position in terms of making playoffs. If you have been enjoying the LTM and draft content in general on this channel, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We are still working towards our goal of 1,000 subscribers this year, and every subscription helps a ton. Our team remains the same, with Crocodile, Uxi, Empoleon, Ogidogi, Iron Leaves, Tauros, Reggie Drago, Salazzle, Mimikyu, Ampharos, and Cloth. Tiro's team consists of Entei, Shaman, Klepki, Feraligator, Galvantula, Dragalgi, Hitmontop, Palisand, Regirock, Sneasel, and Oricorio. Tiro's Terra Captain is Shaman, a Pokemon I have a lot of experience with over the generations, including using it as a Terra Captain in a previous Smogon tournament. It is difficult to precisely predict what Terra type that Shaman will be in this matchup, as there are a lot of different routes offensively and defensively that Tiro can go. The main difficulty in this matchup, however, is going to be managing entry hazards, something that Tiro has in abundance with Galvantula's Sticky Webs and Klefki's Spikes. Without a Rapid Spin or Defog user on our team, we are going to need to be very proactive in pressuring these Pokemon, as well as run heavy duty boots on a lot of our critical Pokemon to get around entry hazards being an issue. Offensively, we need to be very concerned with his Feraligator, a Pokemon that after a Dragon Dance can be very potent against my team. Entei is also a very threatening Pokemon long term against this team, so we need to make sure we keep our checks healthy for that Pokemon to be crucial in terms of winning this game. Due to the importance of keeping entry hazards under control, we are bringing Salazzle as our dedicated lead this week against the Galvantula. Without hazard removal, Fake Out is our only way to prevent Galvantula from setting up Sticky Web in the early game, outspeeding and killing with a flamethrower on the following turn to get around Focus Sash. It is still likely that Tiro is able to get up hazards up this game though, so we're running heavy duty boots to protect Salazzle from the spikes and sticky web, enabling it to be a fast check in the late game as it outspeeds his entire team. Sludge Wave gives us coverage for a Shaman and the potential to get a poison on a Pokemon like Palisand, while Overheat gives us a powerful option to click in the face of Hitmontop or Palisand. With powerful special attackers like Dragalgi and Shaman, Empoleon fits nicely as a specially defensive wall this week. Rocky Helmet punishes Flip Turn from Jigalji, making it easier to check in the late game. Given how often these Pokemon are likely to come in in this matchup, this makes Empoleon a perfect South Rocker on this build, as it will have plenty of turns to switch in and get them up early. Roost allows us to check the Shaman continuously into the long game, and Surf plus Ice Beam give us solid coverage against Hero's team using competitive boosts after Sticky Web gets up to deal massive damage. Iron Leaves is our win condition again this week, with the Sword Stance 3 attack set. Heavy Duty Boots gives us protection against Spikes and Sticky Web, allowing us to come in multiple times, as it will be an important piece to enabling our Oxy set this week. We are Terra Electric this week as a way to protect against Thunder Wave from Klefki, Tiro's best way of keeping this Pokemon under control. We are running Triple Stab Move again this week, as Leaf Blade and Side Blade are both crucial for mid-game attacking, with Iron Leaves against Pokemon like Feraligator and Dragalgi, while Terra Blast gives us a neutral click against a Pokemon like Klefki, where moves like Terra Blast Ground would be countered by Magnet Rise, and Terra Blast Dark would be resisted by Fairy-type. This team struggles with Dragon Dance for Alligator, so we are running Choice Scarf Uxi as our counterplay this week, a set that we ran against Kyle A all the way back in BBR Season 6. The plan is to switch into Uxie every time that Feraligator comes in, pressuring it with either Encore or Foul Play, depending on the scenario. With Feraligator locked into Dragon Dance, that allows us to switch into our Iron Leaves, killing most sets with Leaf Blade. Foul Play is a useful tool to check the Feraligator if he decides to attack first turn, attempting to set up on the turn where Uxie is in. U-Turn gives us momentum to get out of other scenarios we might switch into and want to remain switch momentum, and Psychic gives us a general coverage move to use in niche situations. Reggie Drago this week is our main Entei check, allowing us to switch into powerful Sacred Fires regularly. Covert Cloak allows us to evade burns from Entei, allowing this Pokemon to come in regularly without having to worry about chip damage from burn. Earth Power is our middle ground play in this game, primarily designed to hit the incoming Klefki switch as he tries to protect against a powerful Draco Meteor. Fire Fang then allows us to kill any Klefki set after an Earth Power and two Fire Fangs, allowing us to play around the very likely Magnet Rise set this week. Draco Meteor and Dragon Pulse round out our move slot, giving us powerful Dragon Saps to pressure the rest of his team. The final Pokemon to figure out was tough this week, but Crocodile provides just enough value to earn the final team member slot, running Choice Band to maximize damage. 
Knockoff is our primary attack here, as this is our initial switch into Palisand. Earthquake provides us a powerful option to attack Entei in the mid game, and Gunshot gives us coverage for Shaman if a situation opens up. Facade is a filler move in the last slot, unlikely to matter much during this game, but if we were to pick up a random burn somewhere in this game, it gives us a powerful way to attack through that. And that is our team for week 4 of the LTM. Shout out to Kaz, Amel, and OG Albina for all of the build support this week, and to Diatite for all of the mock support. Let's get right into the battle. So we brought Salazzle in week number one. I was just telling D-Ray before that this game is for him. I, I had to bring Salazzle once, so it didn't feel like a waste on my team after I sniped it from him. Um, so Salazzle is the lead this week. Salazzle is here to specifically counter the um, Galvantula lead. So this will prevent Stealth Rocks from getting up on turn number one, uh, which is basically the most important part of this matchup uh, is to prevent hazards as much as we can. Uh, with either heavy duty boots or this elite option. So good luck, have fun to T-Row. Um, and let's get right into it. I really want to see a Galvantula lead. That would just make this game, um, it would just kind of make the turn sequence exactly what we prepped for and he does lead it off. So that's just, per that's perfect. That's exactly what we were looking for. So we're just going to fake out. This fake out is going to break focus sash uh, immediately. And this will prevent um, sticky webs from getting uh, set up here so one thing that's also good to note is he does not have actually have a great switch in to this fl uh, flamethrower now i do have overheat and i will click that next turn i want a flamethrower here because this is a guaranteed kill doesn't miss that's the main thing i don't want to miss against the galvantula specifically Ooh, and he's choice scarfed sticky web interesting okay wow that is good to note um so sticky webs do get up and Celestial does pick a kill. This is still not like a big deal. Um, a lot of the mocks, the sticky web still got up, so it wasn't like too, um, wasn't the worst thing in the world. And we do have boots on this thing, which is really nice. Um, so this will just make it a, a viable check in the late game as well. One thing I kind of expect to see here, if I, if I had to guess, is the, I kind of, I, I think Gator would be an interesting thing for him to go into here. Gator or Palisand, probably just Palisand would be the safest thing for him to go into. One thing that is problematic, I think, from this spot is Palisand double into Shaman puts me in a really bad spot early on, which I'm not like super big fan of. Bork Bork. Entei. Well, we have Reggie Drago for this, so we're just going to go Reggie Drago uh, every time. So one thing to note about this Reggie Drago, this is specifically designed, as I said in the team builder, to take out this Klefki that comes in uh, after the fact. We do have enough speed also to outspeed, um, I forget what else, but you know, we're, you know, this is primarily gonna be able to get us the Klefki here. We expect the Nine at Rise Klefki. So we Earth Power, Earth Power is just a really, really good neutral click um, into this. He could go Shaman too, um, but I don't think he wants to switch on a Draco. You know, it's, you know, possible I just like Dragon Energy. Well, Dragon Energy, not so much if I'm using this as an initial pivot into the Entei, um, but like dropping a Draco would just be really tough. And I, I kind of expect Klefki to come in here. Shuckle 15, I don't know what one that would be. He does go Shaman initially, okay. So he gets, the shaman in on the earth power so that's good for him that's a crit that's you know pretty pretty bad <laughs> that that's a crit and this is leftovers all right so from here it's kind of an interesting you know decision point of how i want to approach this i don't have a really really great switch in to this and i expect like terra blast fairy i can get really really aggressive here and go into my salazzle um I would still like to preserve the ability to use Celestial at some point uh, in this game, but I, I think that's the safest play. If he Earth Powers, he Earth Powers, and this just might not be the smart play. Um, I could just go into, I, I probably should have had the impulse of the Calc up because I can Calc. Yeah, this does a lot. I'm just gonna go into to this. I mean, this is probably an aggressive play, um, but this thing already traded on turn one. Um, and I don't really expect, I don't think he can realistically go for Earth Power here. If he goes for Earth Power, then fair play. He made a really good play on this turn. Um, 
and then I'm kind of in an awkward spot. So I think this was maybe a little bit over aggressive and maybe too hasty in this spot, especially where I don't actually kill uh, offensive. And he goes for the seed player. So that does about 67. Problem is earth power kills. So this is probably, okay, so I kill and then what's the sequence after that? If I if I just do a lot of damage to this Pokemon, the sequence after that is I could just get a kill with Iron Leaves. So I think I'm actually like relatively okay with this. I could go for the fake out. Fake out actually doesn't really change the calcs in a meaningful way because it just gets leftied up. So I'm just gonna go for a Sludge Wave. He's gonna switch out anyway, so um, we'll take that. We'll take that, you know, very aggressive play uh, off the start, but we forced some some pressure and some progress, and now we're gonna get our Crooked Island, which is gonna be super, super nice. Any poisons? No, okay, unfortunate. Um, this game is kind of going to plan though, kind of as we, as we were hoping for. So, you know, really, really happy with how this has gone so far. Crook is the, the answer to this always. The question here is, do I want to, to click a move that pressures the Shaman in this spot? Because I am Choice Banded. I expect the rocks to go up here. Um, that's the most you know likely move. So he goes for rocks. The question is, is it time to get aggressive um, and predict the Shaman to come in and just drop a gunk shot? Because I, I don't... You know, I, I don't think it's productive for him to stay in. If he stays in and just like clicks in like a medium move that doesn't do anything, like I can go, I have like a bunch of options to go into. Um, and I think knockoff is like super likely here. And I've shown I don't have a great switch in to the Shaman in this game. So I kind of really just want to get aggressive here uh, and force a lot of pressure. <sighs> knockoff is fine too. Well, knockoff, <sighs> man, if he wasn't fairy, then I think this becomes a little bit easier, but I'm kind of already at the stage where I'm waffling a little bit, where I should be a little bit more, have a little bit more conviction on my plays. I'm gonna gun shot, I think I'm him. You know what, he's gonna switch up, please go Shaman, that'd be so funny. Let's go. That's a huge click, that's a huge click. Really need this to hit, boom. That's, that's goaded, goodbye Shaman. That's a big turn right there to get that. I kind of figured there was no way he would stay in, so, I mean, I, I, I mean, it's an aggressive click, certainly, um, but I kind of, I feel like I had to, to make a play there, because, you know, if I make that, get the play wrong, nothing much really happens. Uh, in comes the Gator, so this was kind of another pre-prepared sequence that we have in this game, is to go into Choice, Scarf, Encore, Uxie here. We can Encore on Dragon Dance and then go straight into Iron Leaves and then we get another kill <laughs> at this point. Now, we don't have Rocks up. That's actually something really important to note here. Um, so this is, there's like a decent chance that this uh, Iron Leaves doesn't actually kill the DD for Alligator. Uh, and he just goes for Liquidation. Uh, okay, is that just Choice Banded? Liquidation did after rocks, no, this is like, no, this is like adamant. This would be adamant cheer force to life orb. So what I want to do is just, I'm gonna, if I look at my Pokemon, I can just U-turn. Do I reveal that I'm scarfed? Do I have a reason to at this point? I kind of just want to sack this thing off now because if he's not going to attack, um, no, I'm just going to go into this because I think he's going to attack and I don't want to, I don't want to, to reveal my choice scarf just yet. Um, I mean, if he's adamant and he DDs on that turn, then that's crazy. Um, and then I'm in a really, really bad spot. Uh, maybe I should have sacked off there. Um, that might have been the most productive use of a turn there. He withdraws, okay. So I do reveal my scarf, so that's actually unfortunate. Um, but he's into this now, and he actually really does not have a good switch into this surf. Like this surf is gonna be a problem for him to switch into. Um, so we're just gonna go for it. Oh, this has fucking water compaction, doesn't it? Wait, isn't, that's not immunity, right? Dude, this has water absorbed, doesn't it? I'm so bad at this game. Oh, no, this doesn't have that. What does this do? Yeah, it's defense raised by two. Dude, I have panic for a second. I thought this guy had water absorb. Dude, I would have been so heated if this thing had water absorb. Competitive also with sticky webs is like just like a super fire uh, aspect of this team as well. This should just die, yeah. 
All right, Palisand down to the uh, Empoleon, and this game is just going like super, super well. It's just like all things are going my way right now, um, which like, like you can't complain about that. Now I think at, at this point I wonder what he goes into. Um, I don't think he goes Gator because Gator. I mean, I mean, what do you go here? Like at this point, like Empoleon. You probably think Gator at this point. I have a move for the Gator. So you go into this. Okay. So the question is, is do I... Is there is there a reason for me to not just go into my Reggie Drago? I, I think I still need the Rocky Helmet chip. Just in case things go sideways with the Gator. He could be DD Adamant. That's like very much a possibility here. And as much as it would be nice, just pick up another kill. I, I think, you know, we just have to be pragmatic about this game at this point. Um, and not like get too creative. That's something I think I was getting a little bit kind of in the habit of doing in, you know, some of my earlier weeks is maybe getting a little too creative. That does no damage. And I'm Covert Cloak, so we can't be burned here. And at this point, I have no reason to not just go for the same sequence of plays. Um, cause he, if he is DD Gator, uh, then that's fine. And if he just goes, if he goes into it here on the earth power, then I've got the chip that I need to set up the Uxia line. So I think, you know, this, at, at this point, no reason to get creative and drop a Draco trying to catch that. Cause if he catch the Clef key, then that's really good as well. Cause then we can just kill that. I, I think at this point, it's just, you know, let's, let's kind of make sure that we don't lose this game unnecessarily. And that's a big, big earth power. Now, I think he's probably just going to let me kill this, um, which I, I think is fine. I don't think there's any reason to to mess about with it too much. As he goes for the crunch, and I'm going to get this off um, right here. So Entei goes down to Reggie Drago, and he's down to two more Pokemon. Um, the Gator and the... The Gator and what's it called? The Klefki. And I think looking at the calc, oh, he's just going to go into this. Um, what do I want to do here? I think he's going to Magnet Rise, to be honest with you. Like, if I had to guess, I kind of think he's just Magnet Rising here. I could sack this off and just go into, what do I, I could just go tear, I can just like honestly set up an SD on this thing. I think I'm just going to sack this off. I think I could maybe find another route, like another like angle to get a win with this. And he's going to Magnet Rise. Okay, perfect. I was going to say in my head, there's like an angle that I could maybe pull out a 6 -0, but I think a 5 -0, we just, you know, you take that every time. You don't want to mess about with it. And it's just going to be leftovers. Oh, he's red card. Okay, please just bring me into my Iron Leaves. Please put Iron Leaves on the field. Looks he's not great. This could, I mean, that could have been a better, you know, we could have had a better choice there. Um, so Magnet Rise, red card. Um, what do I go into? Because I kind of need to preserve this. I don't want this to get T-waved because I need the Encore protection. I think I just go back into this, honestly, and sack this thing off. I think I just sack off my Reggie Drago and then go into Iron Leaves and just go for game. I think SD, SD wins the game from this point, especially with Terra Electric making me T-wave immune. So I think it's just smart to, to just just come into this and and just let it be what it'll be. I will live, so we'll see what he wants to do. He's just going to set up spikes, but I am heavy duty boots on my I am heavy duty boots on my uh, what's it called iron leaves. So none of none of what's happening right here will matter. The question is, what are the calcs on Clef Key? Because I, I want the I want this to die. Yeah, I mean this. I I kind of want the. I don't need any more damage on this. So what I want to do, I think, actually is Dragon Pulse, because that's going to do more damage if he just decides to switch into Gator. Guarantees to hit, and then I can lock up the sequence with Uxie in the back. So I think I actually want a Dragon Pulse here because I'm Heavy Duty Boots. This might be getting too cute, but I, I think I want to do that to prevent kind of other situations. Like, I want to set up on this Pokemon. And I was kind of hoping I died to rocks, to be honest. Is this getting cute? Potentially, because this is what spikes... So this is M-Rise, Spikes, I guess he could have Reflect. So if he's like M-Rise, Spikes, Reflect, um, T-Wave, I don't even think that matters to be honest. Like I have so many ways to win around those sets. I, I think, 
No, I'm just gonna fire Fang. I mean, like, it is what it is. He's just gonna get up the third layer of spikes at this point. I mean, if he goes... I don't think he goes Gator this turn. Because he's seen some... He sees that in my situation, I'm protecting against him going to Gator. And I don't think that was ever a consideration. Um, but it might be something he thinks about now. I don't know. I think that, that might have just been unnecessary. He's just gonna set up spikes. Yeah, I think he's just not getting creative here. Um... So I'm gonna fire Fang. That's fine. At this point, I mean, I'm just clicking. I mean, he has to kill me, right? Like at this point, I just want him to kill me. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna Dragon Pulse until I die. <laughs> Basically, I don't have like another play. Magnet Rise Spikes, like, I mean, he could set up Reflex and stuff, but like, I don't even think that matters. I'm just Dragon Pulsing until I die. Okay, he kills me. So at this point, we know he has D Gleam. So he needs like something like Reflect. To, to win this game uh, but even then I don't even think that necessarily matters we can come into the cork driving thing now what is D gleam oh no he could have what's it called I can't SD because he could have a what's it what's the the move called um, battle play so I can't I can't do that that's fine I'm just gonna go into this and get two kills the question is is do I Terra I think you know there's arguments to not tearing to, to maintain a type, but um, we're just going to Terra and Terra Blast into the Clef Key. Get our Terra Electric off. I did say the Terra type, right? In the chat? I did. Yeah, okay. Perfect. And Iron Leaves just showing, like, Iron Leaves might be, like, probably the one of the best Pokemon in low tier, honestly. This Pokemon is like uber problematic for like everyone to deal with. And I just get the Terra Blast. Maybe I could have stayed in like the bigger form, but like, does it even matter? Like, is that even something worth like considering or playing around? Like Aqua Jet? Like, um, Liquidation into Aqua Jet definitely kills. Uh, it doesn't always. Well, if it's Jolly, it depends on the Calyx. So we'll see. I still have like a really good chance to kill this Pokemon anyway. Um, I guess question here is if he DDs, um, what's the play if he DDs? I outspeed with Uxie though. My Uxie outspeeds Dragon Dance. Yeah, my Uxie outspeeds Dragon Dance. So I just, uh, I Leaf Blade because it then forces him to, you know, if he, if he DDs in my face and then kills me, that's fine. But we get the kill on for Alligator anyway, so it doesn't matter. That is a huge, huge win against T-Row. A big 5-0 win really kind of keeps the momentum going in this season that we, we've we needed, you know, to start with. That was, you know, a lot of the problem early on uh, in BBR and GBU. It just got off to a really poor start, but I think that one played that one, I think, to perfection, honestly. And, you know, good momentum builder going into week number five where we'll be playing Dapper Snapper um, and his uh, uh, Appalachian Appletons, I think, is the team name, so... Stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next one. And as always, have a wonderful day.